Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about a question that somebody asked. It's more of a statement. Um, the statement was basically, Dimitri, I would love to hear your opinion um, on QuantNet and kind of their ranking system and kind of the details and just kind of your thoughts on this. So the short answer here is I think they do a pretty decent job at, at ranking these programs. I think they do a better job at ranking these programs than a lot of the other online ranking systems for financial engineering. Um, but in general, let's just talk about kind of the ranking they do, how they do it. I'll discuss some of the issues and problems I see. Of course, they see the same issues, which is why they're doing it the way they're doing it. Um, that's something I would like to see added as well. So first off here, the ranking is broken out really into three main parts. The first part is peer assessment score of 20%. Uh, the second part is placement success, which is 55%. The third part is student selectivity, which is 25%. So placement success and student selectivity are both broken out into subcategories. Uh, the subcategories cover employment rate, uh, employment rate three months after graduation, starting salary, em employer survey score, GRE scores, undergrad GPA, and acceptance rate. So that's fine, right? Um, so just to go through the rankings, one of the problems that I have, and I know they have as well, is that when you rank a program, you can't rank a program unless you have all of the data. So when you go out to universities, and I know this sounds really odd, but a lot of universities don't wanna be ranked. They don't wanna provide the information, they don't wanna be involved, um, they're just there to make money and collect your tuition. I know this sounds terrible, um, but from a lot of work with academics, a lot of work in the industry, there are programs that do basically for-profit only and their real interest is not based on the student's performance, uh, providing value to the student. Um, they're really there just to convince other students to apply and to make money. Um, those programs, I'm gonna tell you, they're not gonna be the programs that are working in this form. So all of the programs in this form are willing to provide the information, they want to be ranked, they want to be the best, they want to provide value to the students. And so I think all the ones on this list are great, but this is one of the biases of this survey and how you would actually rank programs is that a lot of the information, for example, like GRE scores, GPA and all that, it's very specific to each student in that program. So there's no way to kind of proxy that and pull it um, from some other source and so, the ranking system they have, they understand the weakness. They can only rank so many programs, which is why the list is short. I know a lot of students complain and say, oh, Dimitri, it's only um, 27 programs and one that's not ranked. And so therefore, um, you know, this is a terrible list and I don't like it. I actually do like it. I think it's a great list. I think if programs don't want to provide information, I wouldn't really consider that program because there are a lot of sketchy programs out there that won't provide information because their programs are substandard. All right, so one thing I do see that's missing here, and I guess it's kind of proxied, but kind of not, um, is the fact that they don't have academic rigor as like a category. So first off, peer review assessment, I think 20% is ridiculous nonsense and way too high. Um, I think that should be replaced or peer assessment should be reduced, but I think it should have this academic rigor portion. So some programs have core courses that make up the vast majority. Some programs have a few core courses and a lot of electives, right? I would like to see some type of analysis on A, um, are the core courses even rigorous at all, right? Is this a business program? Is this a program offering like business statistics and business analytics and business, business, business? Or is this a program that is offering, you know, high-end mathematics, computer science, um, statistics, and high rigor content? Um, yes, yeah, so you can take statistics classes and have one be very, very good and one be just complete crap and nonsense. Um, you can take one that's, you know, an undergraduate level and the school claims it's a PhD level because the students taking in that area aren't really prepared to take it, so they offer a lower level of education. Um, I see this a lot with the really good programs and the really bad programs, right? Really good programs have high rigor, but having high rigor means you have to have students with very, very specific backgrounds. You can't take the plethora approach of accepting students from all different backgrounds. I think this is one of the biggest mistakes in financial engineering programs and a key sign that your program is weak. Um, I know, I'm hurting a lot of people's feelings on this, a lot of academics specifically, but the thing is is that rigor needs to be included into this survey, and the reason I say this is because let's say you, I, let's say I start a program, okay? Dimitri's financial engineering program, you know, out of Texas, um, and I offer statistics, math, computer science, and so it looks like a really good program, 
but the key is that I'm only offering introduction to R, introduction to Python, um, it's basically Statistics 101, but we're gonna relabel it and call it Stats 590. And we're gonna talk about you know descriptive statistics, and we're gonna talk about OLS regression and like logistic regression, and we're gonna cover all these different models, even multivariate, and we're gonna call this financial engineering, right? And we're gonna cover options. We're gonna talk about call options and put options, but we're not gonna really derive the Black-Scholes. We're just gonna go, how do you implement this into you know Excel? And we're gonna talk about how you implement it using VBA and automate this. And we're gonna talk about how you use options in a corporate setting. And so even in a trading setting, right? How do you minimize risk with options? And we're gonna create this program and it's great and amazing. Here's the problem, that program sucks, right? That program is terrible. And people are gonna look at me and think, I don't understand why, some of you at least. You need high rigor, right? You need to do all of the mathematics. You need to understand stochastic processes. And it, the weird part is like after I graduated, to me stochastic processes was this topic and over here was a stats topic of time series. They didn't link the topics together, which is terrible and it's taken me years to figure this out. I know, I feel stupid, but it's okay. The thing is, is that these programs, a lot of these worst programs aren't even getting to the rigor, the mathematics, the theoretical constructs of why you would even do the math. Why would you even get to the stochastic processes? Why would you even need a stochastic model, right? Or why would you even need an OLS model? Why are you using OLS? Why are you even building a model? How would you program this? How do you optimize the programming, right? Optimizing programming, I know people think like I'm crazy, right? Why would you need to optimize? You just type code and if it functions, it works wrong, right? I'm dealing with millions and millions and millions of observations in my current job, 500 gigabytes and more data sets. So massive sets of data and you can't sample these down. And I know this is hard for people to understand, especially in the tech world. But the thing is, is that you need this rigor. You need something that's very good. And so the thing I don't like about this ranking is you could create a program like Dimitri's financial engineering program and you could have all this really, really crappy um, classes that are really easy. They just take all these people from all over and have this great job placement rate, right? Because I'm placing them in business analytics roles. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is the program then is not a financial engineering program, it is a business analytics program. So comparing a business analytics program to a financial engineering program is not the same thing. And so I think that's where I have an issue with this survey. However, I do think they have done an excellent job at kind of weeding out programs in the sense that I don't see a lot of nonsense on the list. So I don't see them going out and finding these programs. And yes, there are lots and lots and lots of programs that are listed as financial engineering programs, but in my opinion are not financial engineering programs. They're nice, fluffy, feel good about yourself. Everybody's a winner, millennial style financial engineering programs and they cover very basic concepts and things that you just need to memorize. It's not really intellectual rigor and thought and grinding out difficult problems you know, over months of time. So that's kind of my opinion on this. I know I've ranted a little bit and I've derailed, but I think it's excellent overall. Um, again, I would add in their rigor. I think that is the number one thing that differentiates programs. I do not think that their current rankings are accurate in my opinion, given industry perspective. Um, what do I mean by that? I mean that I have ran into people that have went to these top programs and I get really excited when I meet another financial engineer and I wanna sit and talk to you about your program, your experiences, right? And not even like the academic side. I just wanna know like, how was the program? How did you like it? Yeah, you know, that class sucked. This one was terrible. It was so difficult, right? I wanna to relate to you. And then when I talk to these students from these top rated programs sometimes, it's not that they're bad programs. It's just, I think, some students don't learn it. I think a lot of students are just lazy and waste time and don't actually focus on the material. But it's been a great disappointment of mine meeting other financial engineering students to find out you don't like financial engineering. Um, you basically learned nothing in your program, but you have this really fancy name on your resume. So I think the rigor portion here would solve a lot of that. Um, as a professor in a lot of these universities, right, I would encourage you to like grill your students, drive them, work them very, very hard. Um, but at the same time, make sure people are learning. Be there to help people be, you know, an actual professor. Don't be someone who's lazy and just generates nonsensical work that's too hard to do. You should be there helping your students to make these programs better, to make smarter and like 
genius financial engineers, right? I want to see better people in the industry and to do that, you really need better programs, better teaching, better materials. Um, but again, it all comes back down to this ranking system. I think it's okay. Uh, I would change the way it's ranked in my personal opinion. But again, it's hard for me to rank all like 27 programs because I don't have insight into all of the programs. I don't have the data, the information. Um, so overall, I think their methodology is fairly well done given the kind of lack of information they have from all the different universities and programs. So anyways, thanks for listening, guys. I'll talk to you next time.